Hello, I am Terry Danakin. I am a pharmacologist working for GlaxoSmithKline. I've been involved in discovery for 30 years, and I would like to talk with you about a few issues in drug discovery in terms of the questions you see on the screen. So starting with question one, what are the generic challenges that pharma in industry face today? And it's pretty obvious. Costs are high now. Drugs are expensive, difficult to make. What you see here on the screen, the width of that figure represents the um, amount of effort and resource it takes at each stage. So what you see here is as the compound moves on in the system and gets towards clinical trials, it takes more effort and expense. If you have a compound that fails at late stage, it'll be expensive more so than if it fails early. So the first thing we need to concentrate on is to not waste our effort and resource on compounds that will fail. We need to figure out early on that they will not make it and terminate them. So fail early, fail fast. If a compound makes it to stay, uh, phase three, they have already used up, they've spent 90% of their development cost. This graph illustrates one other problem. What you see in blue are the number of compounds that have entered phase one for a range of years, and they are going up. So we are making more potential drugs. What you see in red are the compounds that made it through phase one and two and are now in phase three. In other words, they show that they work. And what you see here is this is not going up. So we are making more drugs, but they're the wrong drugs. They don't work. So problem two is we have to be better at choosing the successful therapeutic targets that we choose to spend our energies on. So this begs the question, where do we see solutions for these main challenges? One might see discovery as simply screening large quantities of compounds, getting your hits, choosing leads, and developing them to a tractable scaffold. And this appears to be a fairly uh, automatic process. So we could say we should just screen harder, screen better. And so what if we had this? We have a uh, screening campaign, and it has run, and it has screened a million compounds with few hits. What are the options? Our option, option number one, is just to keep going. <clears throat> Let's just keep adding compounds. We add 500,000 more compounds, and we keep screening. But more and more, people are trying other options rather than the our option. Option two, why don't we just rescreen what we have a different way? A screen, after all, is just one way to look at an activity. And there's many assays, many kinds of screens that can be used. And chances are the first screen did not detect useful activity because it was not designed properly. The good thing about this option, too, is it's cheaper. You're simply rescreening what you have. And it's much cheaper to uh, redo an assay than to add compounds. So we may need to be the fellow on the right looking at things a different way from the convention screening. 
we are coming out of what I call the genomic age. There's great emphasis placed on the genome targets, recombinant systems. And there was a time when it was thought we could design testing systems that would be simple to uh, understand, simple to detect activity, and this activity would um, relate to therapeutic realm. Um, one of the people who brought us, brought us the genome, Dr. Eric Flander, however, puts it in perspective here. It's a parts list. If you have a parts list for, a, for an airplane, it doesn't mean you can build the airplane. It just means you know what's in it. So too with the genome, we are finding that the system, the way it is put together, trumps the various pieces that make it up. So we're stepping away from the simple systems, returning our screening efforts and assay efforts to complete systems. For example, here we have the receptor, and we see it has a rich array of behaviors. Many of these we can use therapeutically. It activates and uh, interacts with G protein, but it also uh, becomes phosphorylated. It interacts with beta rest in this too, can signal, and so forth. And there are different assays that will tell us these different activities. And so this is making us step away from what was once a, a, a habit of saying we have an assay, and it will tell us everything that that target will do, a one-size-fits-all assay, such as calcium transient. This is just one way to see activity. There are many other assays now that tell us different activities. So what you see on the screen here is a depressing curve of the number of new uh, chemicals that are produced as drugs with years. Um, corrected for cost, and we know that costs are going up. So part of the uh, reason that curve goes the way it does is drugs are getting more expensive. But this also reflects that we're not producing as many new drugs as we should. What are the reasons? I've touched on a few of those. Um, we might have thought too much that all we need to do is screen. We have placed inordinate confidence in robotics, library screening, genomics, and recombinant systems. I would also submit that pharmacology needs to be used to interpret effects in, on complete systems, and I've added one. Pharmacologists, when they are trained, need to go into industry. Hopefully, hopefully, if we can get pharmacologists in industry dealing with uh, complete systems, we can reverse this curve. 